I'm Julie Parks. Um, I'm the Director of Workforce Training in this beautiful building, the Tassel MTech. Thank you for coming out tonight. We're happy to have you here and we're happy to celebrate uh, the first class of the, our Construction Corps program with ABC and HBA and the American Subcontractors. And so without further ado, let me introduce Norm Brady to you, the CEO and President of the Associated Builders and Contractors of West Michigan. Take it, Norm. Well, thank you, Julie, and uh, it's really great to see so many uh, good friends out here in the audience today. Uh, some months ago, I received uh, a newspaper clipping from uh, Tony Rusi. Tony is the uh, Vice President of Construction for Elzinga and Volkers, and in fact, is Tony is, is here tonight, and um, that newspaper clipping depicted uh, a chief financial officer engaged in a conversation with the chief executive officer of a company. And the chief financial officer said, what if we spend all of this money on training and then they leave? And the CEO replied, what if we don't and they stay? <laughs> well, fortunately, uh, employers in West Michigan and many employers uh, in this room here tonight uh, think like the CEO and they understand the importance of, of training. Tonight we're here to uh, celebrate uh, the 18 students that are graduating from our inaugural uh, core construction program. There are a number of uh, caring and dedicated people and organizations that uh, got us to this point, and I'd like to take some minutes uh, to recognize uh, who they are. Uh, first, uh, I start with the board of uh, directors of the three associations that make up the Construction Workforce Development Alliance. Uh, specifically, I'm talking about the Board of Directors for the Home Builders Association, the American Subcontractor Association, and ABC, Associated Builders and Contractors. Uh, you know, uh, it was really those three boards that uh, recognized the urgency and the cr critical need that support. <laughs> I'm glad they, they agree. So. <laughs> But there was a, a critical need for, for programs like these and training, and uh, these boards uh, had the vision, they laid down the expectations, and in many cases, those board members provided their own time, energy, uh, and resources. Uh, they were a tremendous source of encouragement and support, and uh, we thank the board of directors of the associations for really setting the path and getting us moving. We thank uh, Stephanie Beckhorn from the Workforce Development Agency. Uh, Stephanie is a director at the agency, and it was really her leadership that uh, pulled us all together uh, in a meeting uh, in this building on the second floor in mid-December. That meeting uh, really proved to be a catalyst. It, it got things going, and it uh, allowed us to make some key connections. So Stephanie, we, we thank you for your leadership and, and inspiration in getting us started. One of those key connections uh, was with the Michigan Works. Uh, Jacob Moss is the director of Michigan Works for Kenton Allegan County, and uh, it's the, the financial support of, of, uh, of Michigan Works that really made this a viable program. Um, we not only thank you for that financial support, but uh, we also appreciate Deb Leisinga and Michael Blakely uh, from Michigan Works, who also uh, work with us on the Advisory Council for the Construction Workforce Development Alliance. So Michael, Deb, Jacob, uh, thank you. Next is our strategic partnership with Grand Rapids Community College uh, MTech Center. And uh, by that, uh, I'm specifically referring to Julie Parks and Stephen Ray. Uh, Julie Parks is the most collaborative person I know. Uh, Julie her answer is always yes, and then we'll figure out uh, a way to do it. Julie has a tremendous uh, insight, uh, recommendations, uh, guidance. Um, what she says is meaningful. Uh, and when Julie Parks speaks, I'm listening. Uh, Stephen Ray, Stephen is, uh, was the instructor for our core curriculum program. Stephen spent an incredible amount of time working with employers, developing the curriculum not only for the core program, 
but for the three additional tracks that are coming out this fall, carpentry, concrete, and, and iron work. Um, many of, uh, much of that time that Stephen spent was his own time, and he did it uh, because he cares. He cares about the students in the class, he cares about the industry, and uh, he's working hard to make it better. Actually attended a, a class uh, that's in the core program that uh, Stephen led. It was uh, actually the rigging class, one of the modules. And um, I, I was impressed by, by the way the class was led. And, and it was really a class where students were teaching students. Uh, Stephen operated under an adult learning module, uh, gave them the responsibility to teach certain aspects of the class, and really, uh, I'll say, got out of the way but was very timely with his questions and kind of bringing things back into focus and keeping the class moving. So I, I think the students respected the, the adult model that you operated under, and you did a wonderful job teaching the program. We thank uh, Paul Rusi and Titan Equipment. Uh, they provide the training and the equipment used in the rough terrain forklift and the aerial lift uh, module. We couldn't do it without Titan. Uh, we know they're giving us uh, one heck of a deal and I uh, wanted to have special mention for Paul and Titan for their contribution to our program. Their strength in numbers, uh, and each association is benefiting from the participation of other associations. Uh, I thank Emily Lubbers, the Executive Officer of the Home Builders, and Chuck Lane, Board Chair for the American Subcontractor Association for their involvement and leadership in the Construction Workforce Development Alliance. The role that Linda Voss Graham played in developing the concept of the Construction Workforce Development Alliance can't be overlooked. The Construction Workforce Development Alliance was Linda's idea. Offering 15 scholarships uh, through the alliance was Linda's idea. Um, Linda is a, a big picture thinker and it was her early involvement and her influence that helped bring many others on board. Linda, thank you. A special thanks to those employers who were involved from the beginning, uh, those eight uh, employers and those, those 12 people who met on October 25th. Uh, we met uh, at ABC's office, we all recognized uh, the issue, and we looked at each other and we said, what are we going to do and how are we going to do it? And uh, specifically I'm referring to uh, Farrell Clark from Pioneer, Tony Rusi, Elzinga and Volkers, Ben Wickstrom, Taggart Town from Earhart Construction, Linda Voss Graham, Voss Glass, Jack Ostoff, Sobe Company, Dennis Mumy and Ed Bursma from Bauma, Chuck Van Vliet from Kent Companies, Tammy Clark from Tammy K. Clark Consulting, Julie Parks, GRCC, and Stephen Ray. Thank you very much. These 18 students represent the real story of construction. The real story of construction is a story of great career opportunities, of great pay. Uh, it's an industry of high tech, an industry of teamwork and collaboration. They are the real story of construction. Mary Ida Hunt knows the real story of construction. Mary Ida Hunt is a 95-year-old senior citizen. She is a, a resident of Bronson Place uh, in Kalamazoo. And uh, Bronson Place recently underwent uh, a renovation of their facility. Mary Ida Hunt uh, was inspired uh, to write a poem about what she saw uh, during the reconstruction process. She personally delivered that poem to the workers on site and it made its way to me by way of Tony Rusi at Elzingen Volkers. Uh, it's a fairly short poem, uh, but I'd like to read it to you. The poem is titled, uh, Peering Out My Window by Mary Ida Hunt, age 95. For days I've had a grandstand seat watching a terrific show. Looking down within my view, men were gathering, great to see. Painters, plumbers, engineers, all tradesmen building on the same creation. Trucks, lifts, trailer semis and haulers moving in synchronicity. 
gigantic cranes mounted on trailer beds, lifting fragile panes of glass, deftly move like sheets of paper through air to a window pass. Wallboard hoisted three floors high, precisely lined by huge equipment, then hauled in by a crew of workers waiting by the window sash. Men wearing dusty white jumpsuits like mobile snowmen on the run. Well-trained men performing with precision, guaranteed a decent wage. Eight hours done, they returned to their own trucks, vans, or cars close by, headed home or to the pub, ready to leave their day work stage. <laughs> Crews of strong guys in their world of tile and mortar, jobs well done. From the drafting board to inspector come reports of goals exceeded. Resulting in a handsome structure, others stop and gaze upon. Rewards for work beyond a paycheck? Pride, satisfaction, it's completed. Mary Ida Hunt, age 95. Sorry. Chuck Lane, Chuck Lane knows the real story of construction. Uh, Chuck Lane is the president of uh, Van Dam Iron. Chuck is also the uh, president of the American Subcontractor Association. And uh, would you please welcome Chuck Lane. A little correction, I'm a vice president uh, of, of Van Dam Iron Works, but uh, I appreciate the thought. I also appreciate the fact that the train went by when you were speaking and not me. That, that makes life a whole lot easier. <clears throat> My name, as, as I, uh, Norman mentioned, I'm Chuck Lane. I'm the uh, president of the American Subcontractors Association of Michigan, known as ASAM to a lot of people. ASAM is an association made up of various subcontractors, suppliers, and service providers interested in improving the construction industry. And as, as it relates to our membership and our customers. One of the areas we are particularly interested in is education of our members, their employees, and potential future employees. To that end, our education committee, led by Linda, uh, through conversations with the two other associations, American you know, ABC and uh, Home Builders, who all have a similar need to ours, decided to form the group known as the Construction Workforce Development Alliance, or CWDA. As you've heard, this is a fairly recent alliance. We held our first meeting early in December of this past year, but the core curriculum obviously was established much earlier than that. So it, it kind of formed, the CWDA formed around that. Uh, our focus again was on improving our industry image with future employees, with school counselors, parents specific, and uh, those people who might want to pursue a career in our industry. The core curriculum program being used, is being used as a model for future programs aimed at giving students the basic training and knowledge most construction companies, home builders, and subcontractors need when hiring. The program is on a very fast track. In January, we just passed January is when we established the CWDA's name. Uh, we chose a purpose to, to develop and implement a plan to redefine the image of construction and to promote career opportunities within the industry. In February, our board established a 2014 Jumpstart Scholarship. Our aim was to put 15 students through a 100-hour core curriculum course that you students have gone through in just three weeks. Each student will have the cost of this program paid for in full and will be guaranteed a minimum of two interviews with our member companies. We're pleased to announce that we have 19 that we're going to be given the scholarship to in this first, first shot around. And that's an amazing number. <laughs> One other thing I'm happy to uh, comment is about 15 of them are first time in their family going into the construction industry, and that's huge. That says that it's not just father to son. We're bringing people in from all over, and, and it's a wonderful thing. The program is primarily due uh, to the efforts and funding provided through Michigan Works, 
and Grand Rapids Community College. And uh, I just want to thank both of those organizations for the wonderful things that they're doing for us. One other comment, I want to mention uh, Norm, and, and he didn't, uh, you know, thank ABC and Norm, and he absolutely should be because he's a very strong leader in this and has, has done a wonderful thing. So thank you, Norm. Our Alliance appreciates the concerns that everybody has to reach the end. Uh, I also want to mention that Michigan, both Michigan Works and uh, Grand Rapids Community College also sit on our board to help us in our decision making and things like that. And with strong people like Julie and, and uh, Stephanie, it's things just happen and it's an amazing, amazing thing. At this time, a website's being developed with offering information to those interested in our industry. It's going to be a site uh, to use when looking for a career in construction. Through its infancy, though in its infancy, our intent is to continue developing the site to give people information they need and uh, links to other websites that will help them find that career that they're looking for. In the fall of this year, the 100-hour core curriculum course will continue at uh, Grand Rapids Community College. In addition, there have been three elective classes that Norm had mentioned earlier, the uh, ironworks, carpentry, and concrete. And we have the intent to develop more for the re remaining trades, and, you know, mechanical, electrical, there's, there's plenty. I, for one, one, am very thankful for efforts made by those participating in this program, including the HBAC, or yeah, HBAC and uh, ABC, ASAM, Grand Rapids Community College, and Michigan Works. All are focused on the goal to improve the education and to get people working in our industry. In my 41 years that I've been in this industry, and I know that's hard to believe, but I've never witnessed anything where, to the level that, that this joint uh, coordination and cooperation is, has been from all involved. It, it's an amazing thing to me. I just sit back and I'm just like, wow. I want to congratulate tonight's graduates. Your successful completion in this cur curriculum says that what we are hoping to achieve is being achieved and that we really, that really makes us want to work harder at this. May your careers in construction industry be as fruitful as mine. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce to you tonight Stephanie Beckhorn. She is the Director of Workforce Policy and Strategic Planning for the Workforce Development Agency. She's been in that role since August of 2013. Previously, she was the manager of the Workforce Investment Act and Rapid Response Unit. But most important to me, she's a graduate of Michigan State University, so let me call her up, my fellow Spartan. Welcome, Stephanie. I did that for you. Thank you, Julie. Some people might be a little bit intimidated by uh, delivering a speech in this environment with the potential of a train coming by. I am not intimidated, and I'll tell you for two reasons. One, I live by a train track. I don't even hear them anymore. And two, I have an eight and a 10 year old, and they interrupt me all the time, so I'm used to that. As Julie stated, my name is Stephanie Backhorn, and I work for the Workforce Development Agency. It's my pleasure to take part in today's ceremony. This is a ceremony that celebrates the hard work and dedication of not only the 18 graduates, but also of key workforce partners, employer partners, and the education partners who envisioned this day last year. Graduation ceremonies, particularly this time of the year, are very common. However, this particular ceremony is anything but common. But because of everyone in this room, it is our desire at the Workforce Development Agency, the governor's desire, and I'm certain your desire that it become, becomes a common occurrence. What do I mean when I say that it's not currently commonplace? Well, for that, we need to go back to the last fall and understand how we got here. Independently, but ironically, almost simultaneously, in fact, both leadership from ABC and HBA approached the state about their workforce issues in West Michigan. After years of the construction industry, along with other industries uh, throughout the state, 
um, dealt with contracting of the workforce due to the recession, there was a resurgence in growth. However, many individuals had left their prior industries between 2008 and 2011, which was, which was the height of the recession. And guess what? They were not coming back. Both associations faced the same challenge, an inadequate number of workers with the appropriate skill set to help West Michigan grow. When I say grow, both figuratively and literally. So hearing the common issues shared by both associations, we at the Workforce Development Agency reached out to our partners at Michigan Works here in West Michigan, both in Kent and Allegan County, Ottawa County, and Muskegon County. Based on this initial meeting, we pulled together a team to address the worker shortage, shortage that had been expressed to us. So at that table, we had workforce and we had employers, but we were missing another key critical partner, and that's education. That's where Grand Rapids Community College had already been involved behind the scenes and were brought into the group again with us. Their expertise in creating the curriculum, specifically designed to meet employer needs, was invaluable to this process. So as was said earlier, we met right here at the GRCC MTech on a very cold, but it was sunny, December day. And I think if any of us only knew how long it was going to be cold, I'm not sure our enthusiasm and optimism, optimis, optimism on that day would have been so high. But nonetheless, we came together to learn, to listen, to share, and to plan to address the worker shortage in West Michigan, and as important, to develop a plan to implement a pipeline to ensure future demand for workforce, for workers in the construction industry would be continued to be met here in West Michigan. So at this meeting, if you can picture around the table, we had two associations from the same industry, from the same geographical location, who by many accounts are competitors, but they were working together to address their, short, their shared challenge. That's visionary. That doesn't happen every day in the line of work that I do. They knew the alternative for not working together was to continue to face worker shortages and to continue to steal workers back and forth from each other. But there was an alternative, and that alternative was identified and flushed out that day, committing their resources and expressing their need to GRCC so that they could tailor a program to develop, and develop to meet their needs. Now, for GRCC's part, they didn't try to offer the association existing training. They had already sat down, listened, really listened to the need, and learned firsthand what those needs were and developed the specific training. For their part, Michigan, Work pulled, Michigan Works pulled together services and funding to get the project off the ground. They educated the association on all of the available funding and services that can be offered to employers. Of course, funding for training is key. However, they provide many other services to employers in all industries to meet day-to-day -day needs. They help with screening of candidates, providing assessments of potential candidates, and ultimately referring the right individual with the right skills to meet that employer's need. Collectively, the group formed the alliance and and it also invited in American Subcontractors Association of Michigan. At this point, I would like to have, and some of them are already standing, everyone, that's, everyone from the three associations, the eight employers that were here that day in December when we sat upstairs and discussed this strategy, um, GRCC and Michigan Works, would you all please stand? Th Thank you. Thank you for, no, please, please, can you please keep, please keep standing? Thank you for meeting your community workforce needs head on. All of West Michigan will benefit become, because of your dedication. Graduates, I have always been told that behind every successful individual, there are countless others that directly or indirectly help them get to the point of where they are today. Look around. These individuals in this room directly helped you get to this point today. Even if you've never met them before today, they have been helping you. 
Thank you. <clears throat> to, the, to the inaugural 18, I'm not done quite yet. <laughs> to the inaugural 18 graduates, collectively, you have taken impor an important step along your career ladder. Please challenge yourself to learn something new each day, to grow and to continue up that own ladder that is yours. The skills that you've learned in the past few months here at GC GRCC are certainly important. However, rest assured, those skills will become outdated as technology in your industry evolves. Put yourself in the best position to grow within your industry and meet those challenges by committing to continuous learning throughout your career. Your skills will need to continually evolve. Embrace that fact. Through your participation in this program, you have learned critical occupational skills. Skills that employers in your industry value. You have skills that are in demand. And these skills allow you the opportunity to shape your future in the construction industry. Where will these skills take you? Will you work hard and Will your, will your hard work and dedication lead to a job as a project manager overseeing a multi-million dollar construction site? Will that same hard work and calculated risk allow you to start your own business, to be your own boss? Those decisions lie with you. And from what I've seen in the last few months through this process, you have the support of all those in this room in your industry. Reach out to them. Share your ideas. Share your needs but be part of the solution for your industry's future workforce needs. One way for you to be part of the solution is to tell your story. Tell your family, tell your neighbors, tell your local schools. Let them know that cons the construction industry in West Michigan is alive and well. Tell them that there, there are jobs here right now that pay well. They don't have to leave to find good jobs. Tell them they can have a rewarding career while raising their family in West Michigan. But tell them that skills are necessary. Help students understand that science, technology, math, and engineering are key. Tell them that you use them every day in your job. Explain what a typical day on the job looks like for you. Share your successes and accomplishments with them. In closing, congratulations, graduates and congratulations to the Construction Workforce Development Alliance. We at the Workforce Development Agency are eager to watch the Alliance grow, to hear about the success of today's graduates, and to see future students fill the construction talent pipeline here in West Michigan. Thank you. Our next speaker challenges those of us who work here at GRCC every day to focus on students and their success, to connect with employers, to have faculty and staff interact with the community. Without his support, we couldn't do programs like we did with the Construction Alliance. Let me introduce Dr. Steve Ender, the president of Grand Rapids Community College. Thank you, Julie, and welcome. I was thinking, Stephanie, uh, if you caught a sunny day last winter in December for your meeting, that was a good omen. You just didn't know it at the time. I have prepared remarks, and I'm not going to use them. Um, everything that's in those remarks has been said. So I, I'm going to focus a little bit differently if I can, and it's, it's really what I like to do in my job more than anything else, and that's to focus on the 18 men that are sitting in front of me. Um, we are just, and I've been in this community now for five years, and I have lived across this country. I couldn't hold a job, so I just had to keep moving and get another one. And I've had opportunities to work with uh, folks in all of those communities around the notion of workforce development and economic vitality and, you know, how are we going to get from here to there? I have never worked in a community like Grand Rapids. Uh, we are all blessed to live in Grand Rapids. Those folks that stood up just a bit ago, 
you will be those folks as you move forward in your career. Uh, as our graduates, and this is, I hope, one of many opportunities that you avail yourself to at our institution as you continue to skill up during your career, and that's what it's all about for all of us. I don't care what your job is in this country today, if you're not learning, you're getting behind, and you get to a point where then you're not useful anymore, and you're discarded and someone else comes into your slot. You cannot allow that to happen to you. And you've got to be in a position as you grow in, these, in this occupation to provide leadership for others around you. I mean, that's part of our role as, as we mature in whatever our occupational space might be. So I, I want you to think about the responsibility of your work. Um, think about the fact that we live in this marvelous collaborative community where good people step up and say, as they did in this case, to create a pipeline. And, and by the way, you guys set the bar very high. When you, when you start with 18 and you end with 18, you set the bar very, very high. And that is so reinforcing for every person sitting in this room because they have to be thinking, my God, we, we, we sat down. We hammered out a solution, we collaborated with each other, and we did something because this, this happens to us all the time. We're not quite sure, but we have vision and faith, faith and energy, and you keep driving and driving and driving, and good things happen. And, and now, 18 people, you're the good thing that has happened, which will reinforce all this work as we go into the fall term and start the scholarship program or the three modules that will look more at specific skill sets, and that will grow into something even greater. But you guys are the little engine that started all that, and you should take a lot of pride in the fact that we can say, you know, we built that program, we started 18, 18 finished, and I'm hoping that you're gonna come back for more. So high expectations of you. Uh, I have to have high expectations of you. You are our GRCC graduate. Uh, you are part of our brand, quite frankly, and we expect you to go out and achieve heights in your careers that you might not see yet, but I am telling you, it is in front of you. You just have to keep working to get to where you want to be. And remember, as you work with others around you, same notion here with these folks. It's about collaboration, it's about teamwork, it's about risk taking, it's about helping one another. Uh, when those variables come into play in a work setting, great products are produced. So uh, I only say congratulations to you, to the associations, to the state for your belief in our work here. Uh, I will always pledge that GRCC will be a collaborator and a partner, and we do look to find ways to get it done, even if we don't quite know how we're going to get there when we start something. So again, congratulations, graduates. And now the presentation of the graduates with Stephen Ray, our commercial construction, construction core trainer. It is a pleasure and an honor to present the uh, certificates of completion. So if we could have Norm and Emily and Chuck. Yes. Please. There are a couple of students who aren't here, and um, you'll just have to pass over those. They weren't able to make it. The first student, Mark Bordeaux, Jr. Lorenzo Brown. Congratulations. 
Alex Chambers. John Ellsholz. Great job. Bruce Engvall. One of my favorites, Robert Hall. <laughs> Bill Lawson. Nathan Martinez, the direct. Good job. Tyler Michaelinus. Joe Nail. Good job. Aaron Niebuhr. James Sackett. Good job, Jimmy. Jared Vialli. Eden Viramontes. Colin Watts. Richard Wheeler. Good job, buddy. Thank you. So, could I have the class um, rise up and face the audience one more time? And I present to you the inaugural CWDA Core Construction Program graduates, 2014. Now it's my honor to introduce you to Emily Lovers, uh, the CEO and president of the Home Builders Association of West Michigan. 
Uh, before we close for the evening, I just wanted to take a moment to say a very important thank you to GRCC and specifically Julie Park. So if you would please come up here. Um, we've had a great partnership thus far, and I think we're all really excited to have more of these celebrations and to work with a partner who's creative, positive, and really um, great at finding solutions to our workforce needs. So thank you, Julie. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for you Thank you to everyone who could be here tonight. Congrats again to the graduates. And I do believe there is um, a group photo that they would like of you up front. So if you could, before we leave right at the end here, just gather for a photo. Thank you.